When is this market going to stop going down? And I've always maintained the same thing. Ironically, when you go back to even the generational lows of 2009, there was one aspect that kept on coming up over and over again. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good morning everybody, and welcome to another uh, edition of uh, the AccessToTrade.com weekend update show. Hope everybody is uh, doing well. So everything is all good again, right? The birds are chirping, spring is here, food is tasting better, people are smiling. Nice to have you guys back, right? It's been three months and we've had some uh, pretty aggressive uh, sell bias action um, which which was really good on the, on the downside again if you're a if you're a trader um, it's been some really great action both sides um, the moves in the last three months have been uh, ironically very orderly considering all the the news and uh, flow that's been going on uh, but it really does show you and we'll get to this week obviously uh, in a minute staggering uh, moves this week back to the upside but this really should be a big wake up call, especially to new traders. Um, you know, a lot of people, you know, you hear this because of your, you're part of the social media generation. A lot of people use the word, they've been using the word, it's called, you know, cash is a position, right? Cash is a position because everybody's so programmed that you're in this linear bull market that as long as you wait, you know, three, four, five days, doesn't make a difference how much selling there is the market will always rebound and the market will always go higher. And I think a lot of you guys have seen now for the last three months or so that it's kind of not like that, right? And this whole situation, the kind of whole notion that the market will always go higher in a short period of time uh, and everything will be good as long as you wait it out, right? Sit on your hands as long as you wait it out. And this time around, and we're kind of in it, we're just kind of still in it, we're three months into this, right? And a lot of you guys have seen that stock prices don't need to rebound okay the market doesn't need to do uh what you wanted to do or you needed to do and you get very very emotional a lot of people got very very nasty because again i understand your money's on the line you're watching it bleed you're not used to watching it bleed in your mind you're going to be right no matter what but the market like i've been saying for years and years and years doesn't care what we think right it doesn't care that you're a nice person you're a great husband you're a great wife you do great things in the community, you work with the church and this, that, the, the fourth, it doesn't matter. The market's there strictly to facilitate buyers and sellers and basically trade on the staggering events. And right now we're in a big, big staggering event um, that it will take your money, right? And the word cash as a position is, and I'm sorry to say this, and a lot of people are gonna be upset, but this is kind of the reality. It's a crutch, okay? It, it's an absolute crutch. Uh, it's a crutch because you're not trading both sides of the market. It's like getting into a car and saying to yourself, I'm only going to use uh, the side two mirrors. I'm not gonna use uh, the mirror right in front of me. It, it's ridiculous. You, if you're an active trader, you have to trade both sides of the market. If you're an investor, that's a completely different conversation. Again, your, your, your time is probably better served somewhere else. You know, we're inter intraday traders and I think a lot of things that happened in the last three months showed you that you are vulnerable, okay? Uh, that you need to have the skill set to kind of trade on both sides of the market. And just because we had a, a phenomenal rally this week, an absolute phenomenal rally, and we'll get, again, we'll get details in a second, it should be an eye opener, especially if you are brand new in this business, that you should learn both sides of the market. You should be comfortable on both sides of the market because just because we did have a phenomenal move this week, does that mean that was the bottom? Well, again, we'll get to the technical side of it in a second uh, because again, you know, I've traded bear markets that lasted two, three years, okay? And I've tra tra traded two of them that way. Uh, we've been here three months and just because we rallied uh, this week doesn't mean that we are out of the woods. And that's a very, very important point. And, you know, for all you guys who are taking this serious and you want this to be uh, a career more than just a trade, okay, who knows? Maybe this is the bottom. We don't know yet, right? We won't know until we reclaim the 200-day moving average. But the point is, this is a big wake-up call, okay? Try to do everything in your power. Use the weekends, use your day offs, use the nights to kind of figure out both sides of the market, figure out why sentiment is so super important to your development. 
And for everybody who uses the word, you know, cash as a position, I mean, again, how long can you sit in a, how long can you sit on your hands if, if this de indeed does turn into a two, three year uh, sell side environment? So just be, you know, be conscious of what you are. Uh, again, you have two hands, right? You have two eyes, two ears. Okay, you could trade both sides of the market. You're not a bad person. Okay, it doesn't make you uh, evil. It's just reality. Okay, stocks go up, stocks go down. It's the adults in this business that last a long time, not the emotional, um, you know, not the emotional roller coaster uh, people who unfortunately, you know, don't look at reality and unfortunately, um, you know, expire. Okay, expire because again, always remember uh, the market is the market, and, and it's much harder to stay solvent more. Uh, then you can be right. So be that. So let's talk about it, right? So ph phenomenal move, right? Absolutely phenomenal move. Uh, if you look at the scoreboard this week, ridiculous four-day move. You had NASDAQ up 8%, okay? You had the Dow 5.5% and, and you had the SPX up uh, 6%. And the one thing we talked about in a lot of videos over and over and over again, again, people always ask the question, and that question is, well, when is this market going to stop going down? And I've always maintained the same thing. Ironically, when you go back to even the generational lows of 2009, there was one aspect that kept on coming up over and over again. The news was still there. The defaults were still there. People were still losing their jobs, their homes. Companies were still closing. People were going bankrupt, right? But what happened was in, in, in 2009 that sellers eventually got tired and that's the most important part and that's kind of what we saw here and the second part of sellers getting tired we need and especially if you watch kind of the videos just in the last couple of weeks we kept on reiterating the same thing that eventually bad news needs to go numb people start living with bad news they start living with um events and eventually they just go completely numb to it and they brush them off and that's exactly what happened this week if you guys remember we had a pretty big sell-off, I think it was on Monday. And then Tuesday, there was a headline that was from Putin that said he's not going back to the negotiation table, or at least not right now. And this, the cues, if you guys remember, went from like 327 to 324, like in seconds. And the most important part of that was, was the equation we talked about. Sellers eventually get tired and they start living with, well, bad news because that's part of our lives now. Again, war, this wartime environment is part of our lives. And eventually in the next you know, half hour, 45 minutes, that bad news was gobbled up and then the market started to go higher and it closed at the high of the day. Right there and then you saw kind of a set sentiment shift very, very clearly. And then the most important part of that day was we reclaimed the five day moving average that was again if you've been watching these videos the short term the biggest short term sentiment for at least a short term who has control the next level was well can we reclaim the 10 day moving average and that's exactly what we did and the most important part for the next day was what we saw in the fed right fed came out uh they announced the 25 basis points and usually when the fed started speaking especially in the last you know two three months whatever they said it didn't make a difference they would absolutely bury, absolutely bury the market. And what happened was that day, we had the NASDAQ up 250 points and he, Powell started talking, the NASDAQ went red. And again, just like the previous day, the bulls made a stand, the sellers got tired. Again, we started to live with unfortunate headlines or negative headlines, whatever you wanna uh, call them. And the bulls gobbled up that bad news. They gobbled up the sellers again, and then they closed at the highs. And now the, the most important part was that Wednesday close, because they finally reclaimed the 20 day moving average. If you guys have been seeing, we've been talking on the videos, they've been rejecting the 20 day moving average over and over again. So here was the rejection of the 20, here is the rejection of the 20 and here and here and here. So we finally reclaimed the 20 day moving average and that was um, and that was a very, very big deal because again, if you believe in the theory that stocks trade from supply to supply and demand to demand, well, that's the whole point. And we had a you know, specific move, uh, a measure potential to the 50 day moving average. And that's exactly what happened on Friday. And at some point, it got so aggressive on Friday's session that, especially in the morning, we'll get to the pivots in a second, it felt like almost, you know like when, when, when you guys hear on social media like a, a parabolic move on like a small cap stock that just, just goes like, just goes nuts, just goes from like three to 30. 
and it feels like there's no, you know, there's no, there's no sellers. That's exactly what happened at one point uh, in the morning. Uh, Square went nuts. Uh, Nvidia went nuts. I mean, there's a lot of names that went nuts. I mean, it, pretty much everything. Anything to do with high tech beta went absolutely crazy, and it almost felt like this kind of the, like this euphoric gas out, right? And you know, the market came in a little bit, rested, and then just re absolutely exploded into the close. You had Nasdaq re uh, rebalancing. You had uh, option expiration. If some of you guys saw some really exaggerated moves into the close, like a Shopify, right? That's that was Nasdaq imbalancing, right? You see, you see these moves, right? This was Nasdaq imbalancing. Even uh, TMUS, which I still really like, had that big, big move and then had the big, big move down. So there was rebalancing. If you guys saw uh, those big, big moves, you saw a big rebalancing uh, happen at the close. In case uh, you guys were wondering, but the most important part now is where we are on the close. So here's kind of the, yeah, a no bias, right? And that's the whole point of technical analysis. It's not being biased. I was sell bias for three months. In the last three days, it took me a little bit of time to kind of rebalance my brain. Uh, but you, again, you switch. You switch to sentiment. You switch to technical analysis based on uh, chart value. And now is kind of where we are on a no biased approach of what happens next. So if you guys remember, we've had a series of two or three, well, two, well, this is number three. This is the third time around in the last three months that we've had a four day rally and then ultimately it stopped that supply. So let's kind of review this. So if you guys remember, we had this big move on January the 28th into supply, right? We had a big four day rally and people got very, very excited and said, hey, this is it, that's the bottom. The market is great. Google just announced 20 for one earnings. Everything is great. The market fizzled right at supply and started going down. Uh, we, go, we started looking at February 23rd, had this big five day move right into supply and then the market started going down. Uh, now we got another four day move into a bigger supply zone. And now the question is what happens next? And this is the greatest part about technical analysis is we don't have to guess, right? The bull side of it is, well, this is the highest close in this whole formation. We just rallied back to the 50-day moving average. Everything is great. This time is different, right? That's the bull stance. The bear stance is, well, I don't understand what the difference is. We've had rallies now, three separate occasions that did exactly the same thing. Nothing materialistically has changed in the market. The war is still here. COVID is still here. Inflation is still here. Everything is horrible. Dan's mother-in-law is still crazy, right? What has changed? What has changed in this market that's telling you this time it's different? And that's the beauty of part about technical analysis. We don't have to guess. Right now, this is the highest close, right? This is definitely the highest close in this whole formation. We hit the 50-day moving average. We hit supply, just the way we hit supply right here and here and here, right? That's the most important part. Now, the question is, does the even most aggressive bull turn around and say, well, wait a minute. We just saw a move on the queues from 318 to 352. Is this too much too fast, right? That's a very, very, very valid question. Because again, the last thing you want to do is buy something when it's overly exhausted. And this is a pretty big exhausted run. So in my opinion, okay, in my opinion, well, not in my opinion, what I'd like to see, if this is indeed a truly start of let's just call this a V bottom, right? And again, it's a very, very weird so weird name to say uh, because it's not even happening yet. But if this is a case of a potential bottoming out process, number one, we can't. We need to rest, right? Like anything else, you need to rest. It's like, again, uh, you doing a marathon, you just ran 26 miles, you're, you're very, very excited, you won. You, this, is, this is the marathon. And they tell you, well, wait a minute, this is not a marathon. Now this is a triathlon. Now you have to you have to bike five miles and you have to swim another ten miles, right? You're exhausted. You're you know that's the most important thing. And the bear case is well, yeah, nothing is materialistic changed. This is too far, too fast. This is all because of a knee jerk reaction from the Fed. They finally got something off the table. Um, blah 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 blah. So we don't know yet, right? We don't know yet. So I think Monday is going to be very very important, right? If we gap up and if we gap up and get stuffed into supply. That's a problem. We're gonna roll over and start going lower again. But if we can get an inside day, and, and, and sometimes red days, right, are not bad. Okay, red days are very, very structured. They're very, very uh, necessary. If we can just get a day on Monday, right, that the NASDAQ is down 20, 30 points, maybe 40, 50 points, right? Something that's just, just 
pausing, right? Just pausing, resting, you know, just to kind of get its thoughts back together, its sea legs back together. What that's going to do is it's going to get the bears frustrated because again, there is going not going to be any selling pressure after a big four day move. And what that's going to happen as well is it's going to have all the stocks that have big, big runs are going to rest a little bit. And that's going to also enable stocks that are still coming off the bottom to kind of wake up. So even though the indexes potentially could be red, you're still getting a very structured day because other names are being pulled up and you're possibly getting a situation that everything starts to rally in the next week or so. But again, that's a big if. And this 50-day moving average, it's kind of a big deal. So I think going into Monday morning, again, you have to be at least optimistic. I don't want to use the word uh, bullish, but you have to be at least optimistic that the, that the bulls did the right thing, that this is the highest close in this whole formation over here. But the, the, again, the devil's advocate of this whole thing is we're still underneath the 200-day moving average. And again, you can make a case if you, are, if you are a bear. Well, again, why is it different this time? We saw it once, we saw it twice, we're seeing it the third time. Why is it different? Again, I'm not smart enough to figure that out. Let technical analysis, let price action tell us what's about to happen next. So again, we're, we're pretty much optimistic going into uh, Monday session. We are, again, not naive. We see where the 50-day moving average is. And again, if we gap up and we lose the 50-day moving average again very, very early, there is a chance that we could start re ro rolling over and going lower. But the question is, is that roll over a potential for an inside day, which would be super bullish and super kind of necessary? Or is it going to be a start of something that we saw, well, right over here and over here and over here? Again, to be determined. Okay, let price action uh, tell us. So uh, let's talk about the pivots. Uh, incredibly aggressive week. Uh, it felt kind of weird um, from like Tuesday uh, to start buying stocks. It, it, it felt weird for me. It, it took me a minute to kind of figure this all out. Is this the different, you know, is this going to be just like a, a regular little dead cat bounce, something two, three dollars or something to be more? And stocks slowly but surely started coming out of massive, massive channels in it. And you had ridiculous moves in NVIDIA this week, Tesla this week. I mean, everything. It, it doesn't make a difference. We're just identifying the, you know, the stocks that we trade, but everything went nuts. I mean, when you have an 8% rally on the NASDAQ in one week, it doesn't make a difference what it was. Anything that got sold, that everything, anything that reclaimed bottom levels was going to rally. Uh, so let's talk about this. So uh, obviously there was no video on Thursday night. That's my uh, that is my night off. So here is the initial pivot, right? On Thursday session in the video, 246 needs to build to get to this 249, 251 supply. Any build can stretch it, right? So there was a big base coming out on Friday on the video. 250 now needs a strong base to stretch. And the video went absolutely nuts. It, it, again, guys, always remember. The biggest moves are always going to come from bottom channels, right? Always the bottom channels. So here is where NVIDIA closed. It took out this whole channel here, all this supply, and just absolutely exploded. Uh, went from 250 to 265. Just a ph phenomenal move. I mean, there's nothing really to say. If it could stretch one more, maybe it could get to this 270 level, attack this range. But again, just like everything else, it would really, really need uh, a good rest, but absolutely phenomenal move. Tesla broke out on Friday, uh, excuse me, on Thursday. Uh, Tesla 844 needs to take out 8048 supply. If it can build over 850, now it could stretch. So here is the pivot, right? You can see the big move here. Uh, here is the pivot. 875 needs to build for 890 push. Not only the Tesla take out that whole channel on Thursday, right? That whole channel on Thursday and got to 875. It took out 875 and traded right into supply here into this 905. 50 day level obviously all this channel here for next week is gonna be big just like nvidia it needs a little bit of a rest a little bit of a digestion uh but a phenomenal move there on nvidia this was definitely on the on the dl man this was definitely one of the biggest movers of the week here's where it all started here square 117 needs to build right 117 needs to build uh, then you got 128.50, then you got 132 macro. Square went out of its mind, okay? Uh, just, just out of its mind. So it broke out on, on Wednesday. So it took out the 17. You see this 17? It hits a 50-day supply. It confirmed 50-day supply. Just went absolutely nuts to its 128 level. It took out macro 132, and the stock went all the way to 143. Again, if the market continues, this thing has room to 150. 
152. I mean, just an insane move on uh, Square. Uh, Coinbase, you know, started going as well. I mean, everything, anything with beta went nuts. Not really, it's it's like, it's not really any stock specific, but Coinbase, let's just call it 178, uh, needs to build. Here is Coinbase, right? So it took out this whole bottom channel here at 178, uh, traded up to 187, has room to like 193, 94 if the market continues. Uh, unit, again, here's, guys, here's the point. This is what I say, this is why I only trade beta, right? Here's the point why smaller cap names and smaller price names, they're just not the same. Look at the rally everything had. This thing actually had a nice looking chart. Uh, 1390, 14 needs to build, right? So this thing went up for 25 cents, blah, 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 right? That's why we trade beta. It's, it's, for me, at least, it's a waste of time to trade anything else. Uh, GameStop reported earnings. Uh, didn't, obviously, never got down to these lows, but hey, they held, right? They held. Uh, Moderna went nuts. Uh, here is uh, Thursday's pivot into Friday. 170 needs to build to get to this 172 level. Any base above 72, 73 can stretch it. 174 needs to put in a new base of Moderna. Here was Moderna, right? M-R-N-A, right? So it took out this 170, traded to 72, built a 74 base, and traded up to 181. Still has a little bit of room to 84. Uh, so that's that, and uh, NVIDIA 255, next supply, you can see everything's just going nuts, one by one by one, blah, 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 coin going up, everything going crazy, uh, and that's it. So look, uh, look, we're, we're, we're in a really good space, right? We're in a really good space. I think a lot of people uh, are in a lot of, you know, very, very good moods, um, and, and, and it's good. It's really nice to see people uh, kind of get back to smiling, okay? Guys, always remember that the stock market's not gonna define you. If you're a long bias trader, uh, you, shouldn't, you, you shouldn't ever be upset when the market goes against you. Just take, again, we, as we've been saying all along, take pro, you know, proactive measures. Uh, if the market goes starts going down again, start hedging your positions. Short some cues against your positions. Short some spies against your positions. Don't just sit there and complain and be nasty to people. Again, the market trades on both sides of the market. We had three months worth of a pretty good sell bias action. We had a good week of buy buying action. We're at the 50 day moving average on the cues. Let's see what happens next. Guys, God bless. I wish everybody a phenomenal weekend and hopefully we'll see each other on Monday. Take care, everybody.